Okay, another new bit for the specification for the 2017 exams is uh, gamma ray bursts. These are uh, things which were first detected by the Vela satellites looking for Russian nuclear weapons testing. Um, but just after the Americans started panicking that the Russians were blowing up loads of nuclear weapons, they realized that they were pointing the satellite out into space to see these and not um, into the upper atmosphere, for example. Um, so it turns out that these are stellar events. There are short ones which are less than two seconds and then there are longer ones that are what are called ultra long ones that maybe last a few hours. Um, the source of these is um, either a large supernova collapse so these are very large um, stars which don't last for very long and collapse in a large supernova sometimes called a hypernova or the shorter ones actually are thought to come from the collision of two neutron stars. They're obviously extremely energetic events, that's why they're producing gamma rays associated with extreme temperatures. But obviously because they are very short in duration, it does make them very hard to study because by the time you've got your telescopes pointed in the right direction to see them, they're gen generally mostly over. Okay, we can see just an example here from Vine's displacement law, okay, that um, for lambda max t to be 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3, um, if lambda max is a gamma ray, so let's say it's 10 to the minus 15 meters, that gives you a temperature of something like 2.9 million million Kelvin. Okay, so they're associated with a very, very hot uh, object. So uh, here's an example from Wiki. This is a gamma ray burst. Um, it was accompanied by an optical counterpart, so this is the um, glow after the um, gamma rays and it peaks with a visible magnitude of 5.8. So you'll remember that if the visible magnitude, the apparent magnitude is 5.8, that means this event is just about visible uh, to the naked eye from the Earth, um, even though this event happens 7.5 billion light years away, um, this is a redshift distance. Okay, so obviously this implies a very energetic source. We calculate the absolute magnitude of this event. Okay, so we do our m minus m equals 5 log d over 10. Don't, remember, don't forget this distance here is in light years, so we need to divide by 3.26 to turn it into uh, parsecs. And this gives it an absolute magnitude of minus 36. Just for comparison, we compare that with the absolute magnitude of the sun of 4.83. Okay, so remember the difference here, 4.83 take away minus 36. Okay, so we've got about a 41 um, difference in the absolute magnitude. So 2.51 to the power of uh, 40.83 is 2.1 times 10 to the 16. So that's 20,000 million million times brighter than the sun. Okay, so the conclusion you come to from that is that actually... Although you could imagine that maybe things are that energetic, in fact, that's not actually possible. When you uh, when you study these, that's, that, be, that number is just too big. And the reality is a little bit like with pulsars, right? The radiation is not spread out evenly, so it's not following the inverse square law, um, which, of course, we assumed, remember this 10 number here, okay, came from the fact that there was an R squared thing, the 5 squared gave us a 10. Um, so um, it's not a um, spreading out this radiation in different di in equally in all directions as the inverse square law. Okay, it's actually producing a beam similar to a pulsar because a beam of uh, radiation comes out and it happens to pass through that beam, we detect it as a much more energetic source than it would be if it was given out light or gamma rays equally in all directions. Some more, uh, some quite nice videos. Uh, the BBC have got a nice little selection of videos with some nice animations and discussion of gamma ray bursts.